In this video, I'd like to talk about less simple traits, traits that go beyond uh, recessivity and dominance. So, so far, what we've discussed, we've discussed five kinds of inheritance. We have autosomal dominant, recessive, um, X or Z linked, dominant or recessive, mitochondrial, uh, and then Y or W linked and imprinted. And so uh, these, these varied um, in terms of how many alleles we have for an autosomal, a given individual has two alleles, whereas for an X-linked gene, uh, males have one and females have two. Uh, in the imprinted case, we have two, but we only express one and so forth. Um, so they varied in the number of alleles per individual, but in each case, um, we ended up only observing the presence of one of those alleles in the phenotype. Right. So in an autosomal dominant recessive case, if you have a dominant allele, then you won't observe the second allele, whether it be recessive or dominant. We just see the presence of one allele. In the mitochondrion, uh, we only have one allele, uh, just like in the Y or the W, um, and so we only see one allele. Um, and so then that would raise the question, can it ever be two? And it turns out, yes, it totally can. Um, so if we're just talking in the autosomal case, uh, we, could call it, um, we can call that codominant or incompletely dominant. Uh, but the main point is, so th these are terms that some genetics classes care greatly about. Um, I don't care about them too much. Um, I'm going to suggest we just call it non-dominance. Um, but the main point here is that both alleles will in impact the phenotype, right? So we're talking about here in cases where there are two alleles, not mitochondria or Y-linked, et cetera. So let's think about what we mean by dominance. So what we mean by dominance is that if we have, so, so here I've called them A1 and A2 instead of big A and little a. And the reason is that big A and little a is what we talk about when we're talking about dominance and recessivity. But here I want to talk more generally. So A1 is one allele, A2 is another allele, and then we can talk about what the phenotypes are. Okay, so if we have two alleles, A1 and A2, then we have these three different genotypes. Okay, so if you're uh, in a case of dominance, if an individual is A1, A1, we'll have some phenotype, let's call it phenotype 1. If you're A2A2, you'll have some other phenotypes. So this might be uh, lactose tolerance um, and lactose intolerance, uh, or it might be pigmentation or any number of traits we've talked about. Uh, and then what we mean by dominance is that the heterozygote, an individual that carries one copy of each allele, has one of these two phenotypes. Instead of having a third phenotype, this individual has, in this case, phenotype one. So when we observe this pattern, that our three different genotypes only have two different phenotypes, uh, we call this dominance. We say that A1, A1 is dominant over A2. Okay, but it could be the case. Um, so so, so we've, we've spent so much time uh, in our lives when we learn genetics um, focusing on this case that we sort of think of it as being normal or usual. Um, but in fact, it's can often be the case that um, we have a different situation where we have our two phenotypes have two, sorry, our two homozygous genotypes have two different phenotypes, but then our heterozygote will have a third phenotype. And so, as I said, this is called incomplete dominance or co-dominance. Incomplete because one is not, one allele is not fully dominating over the other, uh, or co-dominance meaning that they're both seen. I don't care too much about this distinction. I'm just going to suggest that we distinguish dominance versus non-dominance. And so let's see what that looks like. So um, let's imagine that we have two flowers, uh, a red one and a white one, and we cross them. So let's say this one is homozygous for one allele. This is homozygous for another allele. So if this were dominance, then we would expect to get flowers that are either red or white or even could be a combination of red and, uh, some red flowers in some red, white flowers, some plants with red flowers, some plants with white flowers. Um, so then these alternatives are new, right? So this would be incomplete dominance. So this would mean if we call this big R, big R, and little r, well, actually, let's call this this allele uh, R1. So this would be R1, R1, and R2, R2. Then the cross, the R1, R2, the heterozygotes, um, if it's incomplete dominance, then we see someone, something kind of in between. In between red and white is kind of pink. Um, and then the other possibility that we could see would be something like codominance, where we don't see a blending of red and white, but instead we see parts are red, like this flower, and parts are white, like this flower. So this is sort of the distinction people make between incomplete dominance uh, and codominance. But here, 
the main thing I'd like us to point out is that it's not just simple dominance. We see three different phenotypes, one, two, three, or in the other case, one, two, three. So a, um, sorry about the, uh, uh, the, the marks here. I got this off the web. Um, curly hair in humans is an example of this, where um, individuals with, we can call these alleles because it's not dominant. We shouldn't call them big H and little h. So we'll call them H and H prime. Um, and so that an individual uh, uh, who has the HH genotype will have very curly hair. An individual with H prime, H prime will have very straight hair. And then an individual with one copy of each allele will kind of have wavy hair sort of in between. So if we think about this, what this means now is we have a case where we have two uh, alleles per individual, and they're both seen, right? We have, we have uh, it doesn't just matter whether you have the dominant allele. You have to look at both of your alleles to figure out your phenotype. Okay, so then we can ask the next question, um, can it ever be zero? Um, can we have uh, zero alleles that are observed in our phenotype? So that may not make quite sense what we're talking about. Um, so let's step back and remind ourselves, so what is a mutation? Okay, so the simplest way to think about a mutation is just an error during replication. In fact, mutations can arise a number of ways, but this is sort of the simplest way to think about it. Okay, so that would mean, remember, that our, our, two, our two strands, these are the two strands uh, of a single DNA. During replication, they get pulled apart, and then we add bases, right? We add the complementary base. But occasionally, we can make a mistake. So here, instead of adding an A with the T, uh, we've added a G with the T. And I've just sort of uh, uh, lifted it up a little bit so we can see that this does not match. And then we continue, uh, and we do both strands. And so now we have our both strands replicated, but one of them has an error. So this error, um, right now, it's, it's, a, it's a mismatched base pair. Um, and so what can happen um, is this will get corrected. And it could get corrected in either direction. Uh, but if it gets corrected in uh, the direction of keeping the G and, and getting the C to complement the G, then what we have is a new mutation here, right? It's a new random mutation that's due to a mistake. This mutation did not occur because it will have some phenotypic impact. It's a random mutation uh, during replication. And so, and so now this has given us two alleles, right? So this is what we mean when we say we have multiple alleles. We have multiple uh, differences uh, due to mutations. And so the point I'd like to make here is that many random mutations, these mutations are happening randomly, and a lot of them fall far from genes. So what we're looking at here, so this is a browser, this is um, a genome browser, a way to browse instead of browsing the web with a web browser, or browsing the genome with a, a genome browser. And so just because this is interesting, let's go through it a little bit. So we're looking at a chunk of gene of the genome here. And what, actually the chunk we're looking at is a chunk of chromosome 15. This is the centromere and we're looking at a part way down at the end here. Okay, so how much of the genome of the, um, of the chromosome are we looking at? Um, well, we are looking at from 94,000 uh, to 97,000, roughly. Uh, and actually here it tells us we're looking at uh, 3.4 million base pairs. And so the point here, so, so each one of these little things, one of these little lines and sticks, is a, um, is a, is a gene. So this would mean an exon, and then this line is an intron, then an exon, and then this line is an intron. And so the point I'd like to make is that if we look at this genome, we have a lot of parts of the genome where there are no genes. And so if we get a mutation there, right, if we get a mutation, a random mutation here, we don't expect it to change the protein coding sequence. It's not near a gene, so it probably it so it won't change the promoter, and it probably won't change binding sites for, for the kind of regulators we've discussed. So we would expect if a mutation happens here, or if it happens here, or maybe if it happens in the middle of an intron, um, we expect that it probably will not have an effect on the phenotype. Um, and so what that means is if we have this random mutation giving us two alleles, that we can still, like if we sequence the individual, we would be able to see uh, which of the alleles it has, um, but we may not see a different phenotype. So. If we have, our, we have our two alleles here, let's call them A1 and A2, that would mean if these alleles, if which alleles you have do not in impact your phenotype, then we actually expect to see no phenotypic differences between them. And so in fact, if we have mutations that do not have phenotypic consequences, which we often do, um, then we really don't observe either of those alleles in our phenotype. 
So the next question is, can it ever be more than two? Um, and that's actually going to be the topic for our next, uh, our next lecture. Uh, and so we'll leave it there. So just to sum up, we've talked about these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different kinds of inheritance um, and how they impact our phenotype.